welcome back. Well, you get to see his real face, not that one actually. So, but the name is the name. <laughs> uh, Mustafa Sai is the president of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. He's right here. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. So, there you go. Apologies for that mix up. Oh, okay. Well, you know, there's uh, been a lot uh, making the rounds about that directive by the NBC to broadcast stations, both uh, electronic and the print, uh, electronic uh, radio and TV. I mean, so um, you've seen that, uh, lots of reactions coming through, and who knows for how long it will be. So what were your immediate thoughts reading that, as a matter of fact? I, my first thought is, I wasn't surprised really, because in the last three months, the guild has, has caused to uh, issue three statements against um, the actions of the NBC. Uh, even when they imposed $5 million fine on channels and inspiration FM, we did that. But it's just that, this is the first love letter in quote from the new DG of NBC. Say that, um, number one, we should do not uh, as we really put it, um, kind of glamorize um, um, bandits, kidnappers, and um, insurgents. Uh, and my worry about that letter is that it is not really, it is vague. When you say that, uh, don't give details of security um, incidents. How details are the details? Is the NBC say that, for instance, if there's, an, if there's a kidnap in a school, we should report the numbers of students kidnapped, the name of the school, and the action of security or not try to, I mean, uh, rescue them. So a lot of things that are, are in that letter that I really don't really understand. Um, then number three, say that um, your guest or analyst you should caution them uh, against uh, making statements that would divide the country and all that. I, I think it's, 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 it's um, kind of uh, it's vague. Because uh, to you, what is divisive may not be divisive to me. Uh, but I think the media is a platform where people come and express their ideas. And uh, it's a marketplace of ideas, you know. Some could speak for and against any, anything. So you cannot say, don't say this and you say this. You know, but one thing is very clear that the media would never, never promote violence. It's clear. We would never do that. Then number two, the issue of security details, um, reporting details of security agencies. For instance, I bet the media will ever report that you just see a plan of pressure by the security agencies. The media will never report that because when you do that, you are giving information to the enemy. I don't think the media will ever say um, public details of an ongoing security operation, for instance, or pictures of dead soldiers and uh, wooden soldiers. That would be counterproductive. I don't think we, we ever do that. So it's, it's clear. I think we need more clarity for the NBC or what he actually meant by uh, that letter. Okay, I guess that leads to that question I was going to ask you anyway. Do you see any value in that... Uh, any, 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 any validity in the content of that communication from the N NBC? Do you see any justification for any concern, any reason for concern in that from, that, from what that letter says? My immediate conclusion should be that it's a, um, a letter that has gone out as we are expecting something different, something new. Because he, he, he said it's a caution, you know. We should be cautious of what we do, and we went ahead to list what should be done. And from my own interpretation, it's difficult for us to really understand the motive behind it, because you, you, if they give us license to operate, it will tell us enough to ensure that we do what we have to do. You know, this idea that when you are in power, you feel that we are the only patriot. Why others are not patriotic? I don't think we should go that line, really. Uh, the media, if you take a look at our history, we've always been patriotic. During the colonial days, the media fought for independence. Even when the military struck and forgetted our democracy, we had, we had vanguard in the fight for democracy restoration in this country. Even though we are enjoying today, we fought for it. Some of our police even lost their lives in the process. And um, media had to be closed. We always fought for what is right. You know, that is our history. And to think that we glamorize, for instance, say, don't glamorize insurgency. To glamorize means 
to make some tea seem um, acceptable, kind of. How, why should that? Why did media do that? The media have been victims of evil insurgency in this country. Some of our colleagues have been killed. You lost a, a reporter in, 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 to, to Boko Haram in a Kano. This office in Abuja was bombed. Media houses in Kano were, were, were attacked. So why should we glamorize um, insurgency, for instance? Why should we glamorize um, kidnapping? Where of our colleagues have been kidnapped and they were killed? As I, as I, speak, I was going to travel to my village today uh, to our chief for Salah. I couldn't go. You know why? I heard reports that the Bini Aochi Road have been especially kidnapping um, cases for the past one week. So I couldn't take that risk. We are all victims of this. So we would I love it to even end today if possible. We would love it to end. So uh, this idea that we should do glamorite and all that, that we should report details of security, I mean, uh, uh, attacks or whatever. I don't know what they mean by that. You know? We are in the business of reporting events. The media doesn't create events. The media reports events. If attacks don't happen, we will not report. But if they happen, we will report them. That is our job. You know, I mean, it's interesting you, you give that background of Nigerian media being patriotic and you've referenced some of these incidents over time and even till this moment that Nigerian media continues to do to keep Nigeria together. And you also mentioned earlier that this caution or this particular statement was not as specific as you would have loved it to be. What kind of details would you have loved to see, at least such that we know this is regarding security, but the particular incident, perhaps, you expect more to have been said. So what are those specifics? Number one, um, MBD should have given the of glamorization of um, insurgency, banditry and kidnapping. There was so such um, example that the media had done then number two, when you say don't give details of attacks, what, what, are, what details are we leave out from any uh, such attacks or kidnapping, for instance? Is it that you should report the number of students kidnapped if the, if the school is, 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 is attacked? Or if an emir is kidnapped, we shouldn't uh, measure is, is the name of the emir? Or that um, insurgents have attacked a community and we keep 20 people, should we report the number? I don't just get it. You know, that's why it should be better for him to have given us instances of where the media, for instance, had glamorized insurgency or have overreported uh, uh, attacks by bodies and insurgents. You know, that, that particular uh, statement started by saying that the NBC recognizes that bringing information on security to the doorsteps of Nigerians is a necessity, essentially saying that, I mean, this is part of the job that the media is meant to do and you know the NTC said that you know too much details like you've said may have adverse implications on efforts of security well that's it that's that letter which you see on your screen there topics with ethnological coating pitches one section of the country against the other and you know it, it goes on and on to speak on uh, some other issues but I'd like to ask you do you think that maybe uh, the 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 NBC might be referring to maybe some media organizations that are outside its purview, because so far, at least the ones they regulate seem to have done a good job. You know, you're right, because I'm also from the, uh, the broadcast sector. We, 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 I think, you know, there is this fear um, about the government, about the, the broadcast industry. That was why until 1992, when the security was promulgated by the IBB regime to deregulate the broadcast sector, it never allowed private people to participate. Even after the deregulation, we are highly regulated. You know, so it's, it's clear um, that, that, that that happens. You know, but the broadcast sector still, is still better in a way that we hardly report such things. Hardly. Some things you can read in the papers, you can never find them in, 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 in broadcast stations. Never. Okay. Maybe, maybe because, you know, mm -hmm. they feel that uh, we regulate the broadcast sector, but in our press review every morning, we bring in the unregulated in court newspaper and um, air them on, on TV. You know, that is why my fear is that I hope they will not in the end stop us from uh, press review. May review okay. newspapers every morning. Let's even read that whole uh, letter from start to finish. 
Because, I mean, some lawyers will take it clause by clause, you know, so that they can explain what transpired. So there you go. Newspaper review and current affairs programs, a need for caution. Yeah. It goes on to read, the National Broadcasting Commission wishes to draw attention to critical issues arising from review of newspapers by broadcast stations daily. Headlines of most newspapers on a daily basis are replete with security topics. While bringing information on security to the doorsteps of Nigerians is a necessity, there is need for caution as too much detail may have adverse implications on the efforts of our security officials who are duty-bound to deal with the insurgency. Some of the topics also have ethnological coating, thereby pitching one section of the country against the other and leaving Nigerians in daily hysteria. The Commission, therefore, enjoins broadcasters to collaborate with government in dealing with the security challenges by not glamorizing the nefarious activities of insurgents, terrorists, kidnappers, bandits, ETC, advising guests and or analysts on programs not to polarize the citizenry with divisive rhetoric in driving home their point, not giving details of either the security issues or victims of these security challenges so as not to jeopardize the efforts of the Nigerian soldiers and other security agents. The Commission reminds you to be guided by the provisions of Section 541F and 543 of the MBC Code that states, quote, the broadcaster shall not transmit divisive materials that may threaten or compromise the indivisibility and indissolubility of Nigeria as a sovereign state, and in reporting conflict situations, the broadcaster shall perform the role of a peace agent by adhering to the principle of responsibility, accuracy, and neutrality. End of quote. Warm regards, Francesca Ayeto, Mrs. Director, Broadcasting Monitoring for Director General. Well, now we did reach out to the MBC to um, uh, at least avail us that opportunity and privilege to explain to a lot yeah. of people who may not understand certain things here and leave it to their own interpretation. But I think they said that uh, perhaps in, in the days ahead, we just might have that because they will not and are not able to make it on the program today. So that is uh, that letter. But we, are the, we have other panelists. Uh, don't worry, Mrs. Sai, you still have a lot of opportunities to make a lot more points. Mm -hmm. But let's get to Mark when I think she may have a question or two for you, as well as our guest there. Indeed. Uh, let me quickly uh, put the question I have to our guest in the studio in Lagos before I introduce my guest here in Abuja or the guests we have here in Abuja. Um, I'm just wondering, you know that indeed uh, broadcast is highly regulated and there's a lot of work going on in that particular sector. Is the reason why we've seen this letter in the first instance uh, directing broadcast stations to, to, to be mindful, be cautious, so to speak. Um, and some people will say that perhaps if we had, if we, if we had a way of checking what was going on uh, generally within the media space, perhaps there would have been no need for this. Don't forget that early this year, um, early this year, a colleague of ours had cause to write uh, about her concerns in the media sector. I don't know if you saw that letter. It was written by Kadria Ahmed. Uh, you know, drawing the attention of fellow journalists to how things were being reported in the media space. She feared uh, that the way things were going, let's not forget that at some point at the beginning of this year, uh, there were heightened fears that things could degenerate. We saw what was happening in Ibadan. We saw some parts of the East, and we also saw reactions from the northern uh, part of the country. Uh, in your own um, reading of things, um, do you think that we have played a role that moderates or do you think that we have also, you know, added in the manner, of which, in, in, the manner in which we report certain stories, um, that we've added to how things, according to this letter, the hysteria that Nigerians feel about the security situation in the country? Uh, first and foremost, um, if attacks don't happen, the media will not report them. 
um, because they are happening, and there is fear in the land. Uh, you expect the media serves the public. You know, if um, bandits don't attack a school or kidnap 200 students, the media wouldn't even report it. But there are certain things that actually have my concern, really. Uh, but not necessarily from the broadcast. Um, for the print, for instance, uh, you, you know, first and foremost, there are some papers are set up for different, for different purposes, uh, so some different interests. Uh, uh, for instance, personally, I'm against the fact that we stigmatize um, some um, criminals or attach the ethnic origin of a criminal in our reports. I, I, I'm plenty against that. Uh, um, so I've seen that in some, some of the newspapers, and I'm against it. You know, but what I also noticed is that regional papers tend to um, kind of um, play up regional interest. I think in, in, today in modern media, I think that is allowed. Even in the US today, you could see uh, Fox News, um, CNN, and uh, other people. They even go ahead and endorse candidates during the elections. You know, they move to that level right now. You know, if you don't allow this happening, you can go and counter it. But I do know that, for instance, in channels, if somebody says, for instance, um, let's from our own country, based on our own um, ethnic um, uh, origin, uh, some may say, we don't like it. You know, but you can put two of them on your program. You, you, you have a special idea. I know how to come and counter it. Let the viewer decide who, who is right or wrong. Sorry, sorry, but let me yeah. jump in and uh, explain up of that question. Could it be that the media, have we been able to draw the line so that we don't necessarily give them oxygen, the insurgents or terrorists now, because, you know, a lot of them might like propaganda. So is the media feeding into that? Have they been able to draw the line? Could that be the concern that the commission has? You know, definitely, uh, you know, the, 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 for terrorists, feed on propaganda. They feed on publicity. I think we should deny them that, really. Uh, um, uh, for instance, if you see a cover of a governor passing, they can just fire a gun. You would know that you can't, you can't get the governor, but just to, to uh, have big headlines the next day. Uh, governor's convoy attacked, you know. But they feed on, 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 on publicity. We can deny them that. You know, we are not, the media in Nigeria, we are not really, for instance, this is your security, for instance. Uh, we always support the security agencies. You know, uh, we will not, I will be here to see that there is a plan by security to carry an operation and you expect the media to report it. We will be giving information to the, to the terrorists. Before they get it, they will, they will put our media, our soldiers in, in, in harm's way. We will not ever, ever do that. But clearly, clearly, even when there are excesses on the part of the media, there should be ways to deal with it. There are ways to deal with it. We are in broadcast, for instance. We, it, the embassy is there. That's why I said in the letter, they should have told us exactly instances where we will have uh, glamorized attacks, or we will have given two more details of attacks. But they did say that. Or maybe they convey a meeting of broadcasters and tell us exactly what they mean. I'll go right ahead now and introduce the guests we have here in our Boja studios. We have Mr. Mike Ejofo, who is a former director at the DSS, and also he's, um, oh, I was going to say, I was, I was a little confused as to DSS or SSS. It says SSS here, but hey, you know what I mean. DSS, SSS, they're one and the same thing. And then we'll also be talking about the legality of the directive. We have, we have with us Mr. Ofion Ofion, who's a senior advocate of Nigeria. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, let's start with you, Mr. Ejofo. You have seen this directive by the uh, NBC. I nearly said DSS. <laughs> but one of the things that they are concerned about is demoralizing the security agents who have to, you know, um, attend to the issues uh, around security. Uh, do you think that the manner in which broadcast houses and this is very important because what the papers do is is one thing how the broadcast houses now in turn relay this is another kettle of fish do you think that you, the security agents have anything to fear with the manner in which uh, broadcast houses have relayed what is on the front pages oh, i don't see i don't see anything wrong with uh, what the broadcasters are doing in terms of review of uh, papers uh, and I still can't understand the details of the directive from the NBC. 
if this directive had been coming from uh, maybe security agencies, one will understand it. Because this is a regulatory body. And there are defined and, uh, offenses. If such offenses are committed, I have seen situations in the country here when NBC came out and sanctioned some uh, broadcast houses. So for a general statement that people should be cautious, broadcasters should be like, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm at, a, at a loss. I don't fully understand it. Because my point is that the Nigerian media has been very responsible since the inception of this. Thing. I had, in terms of reportage, there was a day I, at some occasions, also I appeared on television questioning when the military cla uh, claims that 1,000 uh, insurgents have been killed. We don't see the pictures, we don't see, but you see, for the social media, I'm talking of conventional media now, for the social media who carry fake news, well, I think uh, NBC should go after those, those people. Well, for and this is, that's not their space. They don't re regulate social well, media. Well, they don't regulate. So if they don't have any, or if they have any specific offense committed by any of the conventional media, they should take uh, action. I recall, too, that um, there have been quarterly meetings. I can't remember. I think 2018 or 2019, when the state security service engaged the media executives to educate them on the line, because the line is thin between security, uh, national interest, and uh, sensationalism among the media houses. Yes, we admit there are occasions we have sensationalism, but uh, I can tell you that uh, they've been responsible in reportage mm -hmm. in terms of what they have been putting out to the public. And if you're talking of paper reviews, these are issues reported. And you say the media houses should not report what was reported. So I don't get. No, we, we should be careful. I mean, they say we shouldn't glamorize. There were specific instructions, even though uh, some people are still saying we need a little more clarity on that. Um, don't glamorize this. Don't, uh, let me see if I can get details now. Chamberlain read it out earlier. Don't, not yes. glamorizing the nefarious activities of insurgents and terrorists. We should advise guests and analysts on programs not to polarize the citizenry with divisive rhetoric in driving home their point and not giving details of either the security issues or victims of these security challenges so as not to jeopardize the efforts of the Nigerian soldiers and other security agents. So those are the three key issues for, for them. Did they, did they liaise with the security agencies before coming up with it directly? Do you did think that, do you, that would be the question I was going to ask you next. Do you think that that could have happened behind the scenes? Maybe the security agents, I, I, I don't agencies think so. decided to complain to the NBC. I don't think so. If it were to be the case, I think they should speak for themselves, not the NBC speaking on security, leaving its own statutory functions of regulation. Mm. Let me come to you, Mr. Ophion, Ophion, because, I mean, they have done this, this uh, raised this issue with a particular section of the code of the guide's broadcast. Uh, they say the commission reminds you to be guided by the provisions of section 5.41F and 5.4.3F of the MBC code that states that the broadcaster shall not transmit divisive materials that may threaten or compromise the indivisibility and indissolubility of Nigeria as a sovereign state. And in reporting conflict situations, the broadcaster shall perform the role of a peace agent by adhering to the principle of responsibility, accuracy, and neutrality. That's what they cite here. And they believe that this should come to play in reporting what is on the front pages of the papers. Okay. Um, let me take uh, maybe a step back and say that there are a number of um, legal and constitutional um, instruments implicated in what is going on here. Um, the first is to say that the NBC 
under the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission Act, is entitled to bring out a code, a national broadcasting code. So if they have brought out a national broadcasting code, as they have stated, they are within the statutory right to do so. However, in this country, we operate a constitution which declares itself to be supreme. So it is not sufficient that the NBC um, relies upon the NBC Act to promulgate a national code. They must as well look over their shoulders to ensure that what they promulgate as the NBC um, code. See, principally, the regulation on expression, freedom of expression, stem from a background, historical background where governments sought to control thought. Governments sought to control what expressions are made and so on. So, um, coming from that background, I'm suspicious whenever government is out there trying to control thought by way of content and uh, so on. I think, speaking for myself, that what you need, you can't, if that is the truth, uh, let me be very clear about this. If a man had been attacked by a headsman, and that's what he saw, and that's what he experienced, to ask him to deny that, it's like asking him to deny the truth which he knows. And if the uh, uh, editors of uh, whatever program get hold that, that information, and um, they may be sensitive to it if there is a, a violent, um, an expectation that violence may erupt, that's, that's right, but it cannot be on a regular basis that you ask people to suppress what the tr truth is. I, I, and let me also say this. You see, I'm not an advisor to the government, and I worry about sometimes the kind of actions they take, because the actions they take may also reflect bad up on them. Is the government aware that part of what is fueling this problem, this ethnic profiling, is the uh, concept, conception, or is the thinking that government is actually protecting certain ethnic groups. I do not know what the truth lies in that. But if government persists in saying, don't profile these people, they are going to emphasize that narrative. The narrative that, oh, they're out again with government authority, with government power to protect a certain group of people. So they should think about that. If you ask me, the real challenge of government is this that the effectiveness of law enforcement. Look, if people have attacked a community and they are apprehended, effort is exerted and they are apprehended, and you know who they are, and they are brought to trial, you understand? It wouldn't matter where they came from. People would think justice has been served. The problem you have, the problem we have in this country is this, that this attackers continue to remain faceless. And then you have a situation in which you're trying to suppress those who think that truth is that these attackers are from a particular part of the country or a particular ethnic group from saying so. That's going to be counterproductive on the government. That's going to be counterproductive on uh, support for the government. So the government should rather devote that its energy towards discovering who these people are. And can I say something else, finally, on this point? You know, I'm generally very suspicious of this narrative about unknown gunmen. I'm old enough in this country, lived long enough in this country. During the Abacha regime, what you found is that there were a lot of attacks and killings, shootings here and there. And it was all attributed to unknown gunmen. Then a government came, which was opposed to the Abacha government. And suddenly, we now found that unknown gun, uh, gunmen were only unknown to us. They were known to government. It was actually government agents. I do not want to live and believe that our police force, our law enforcement agencies. Look, we have like 17 law enforcement agencies, and we cannot be effective enough to apprehend people or attack communities or attack 
to uh, farm land to uh, attack even the rustlers, even the owners of cattle themselves who get attacked. And that we cannot find that out. No, it smells too much like there's a cover up here. So NBC should be wary of being used to perpetrate a narrative which will end up being counterproductive to the interests of the government. That's what I would say. Well, let me quickly ask Mr. Ejofor, are there details that you have seen on the front pages of dailies before now that you think, I mean, as a security expert and one who's worked with an, an intelligence agency that has given you cause for concern that this should never have made the front pages in the first instance? Uh, for, for the recent time, I'm not aware of anyone that has given that kind of a sensation or uh, coloration of uh, ethnic uh, uh, grouping and that. Uh, but like I said before, that uh, the Nigerian media has been very responsive and responsible. And that's as a result of engagement between the security agencies and the media. I'm aware of several meetings between the state security service, for instance, and some media executives. I can't remember. There was a time they were even quartered for maybe three days, the media executives in the Institute for Security Studies, National Institute for Security Studies, where they were taught, in addition to their own profession, the distinction between making news and national interest. We cannot compromise our national interest on the uh, plot of selling newspapers. And, uh, and I, I think since the engagement continued, we've had uh, positive results. I'll give you an example. While I was in the service, I had luck of uh, having headed more than ten, uh, seven states. And the first thing I do when I get to any state is to look for the NEJ chairman, to engage him and talk with the media on the need because the difference is that the media reports for the public. The intelligence agency, for instance, reports for government to take action and form uh, for formulation of uh, policies. So I tell you... They're all in the reporting business. Oh, yes, when the reporting <laughs> business. And uh, I tell them, I, honestly, I will be able to say that sometimes I give them exclusives, front page news, because it's of no value to me. And there are some too they have, and I say, look, this is not of, of interest to you. So give me, we we'll have exchange of information, and I think that's the way it should be. Uh, I believe in proper engagement instead of this uh, issue of um, NBC coming. I smell a rat. What was the smell? Perhaps there is a particular organization or some organization that have been targeted. This is just a smooth screen to give a warning. Yes, we did say that uh, people have been reporting because uh, if paper reviews, you give details of what is happening in the newspaper. Some people want to use that opportunity to go and buy newspapers of interest. So I don't see anything wrong with that. And, um, honestly speaking, NBC should be very, very cautious, instead of cautioning the media. Mm. Let me flip this now to Lagos. I know my colleagues have questions for you. Gentlemen. Yeah, let, let me ask Mr. Ophiong, um, in consideration of that, the letter uh, by the NBC, uh, because, I mean, the general rule for editors to reporters is that the first paragraph must at least answer the questions of the principle of who said what, when, where, why, and how. And by so doing, they'll have all the ingredients to write their stories. Now, those are details. So now this letter says they should not discuss or divulge details. And then it quotes the NBC code where it says the broadcaster shall not report or broadcast divisive materials. So one wonders, um, how do we even define those divisive materials? Because if... I mean, we had several social scientists, researchers who have said, the authors who have said, look, meanings are not necessarily in words, but they are in people. So in what circumstances, looking at this letter, will the broadcaster have been adjudged to have broken the law with their reportage moving forward? Okay. 
Is that, is that for me? Yes. Yes, Mr. Ophion, for you. Um, uh, I'm going to disappoint you, uh, Chamberlain, uh, because um, the way we, the law operates in this country, um, you won't have a for uh, the content, the, the, the intent of the conduct, the, the specific conduct um, can only be stated in general terms. Um, you asked about what would be divisive here. Well, the unfortunate thing is you have to get to the courts when the um, prosecuting agencies complain that what you have done is divisive to find out whether or not um, it meets the divisive criteria. I'll give you um, my thought on this. See, recently, um, a gentleman in Lagos, uh, a lawyer, I think Solomon Okadere, went to the Federal High Court and sought to challenge the Cyber Crimes uh, Act uh, on the basis that it was unconstitutional. And the basic question which he posed to the court was that um, was such as annoyance, um, scandal, and so on, were vague and uh, incapable of precise uh, meaning. So how does a citizen know that um, this particular conduct uh, falls within the pale of the word annoyance? And the court uh, simply threw out his case and they said to him that, well, that is clear enough. Um, when the matter gets back to us, on the specific, we don't deal with academic uh, questions. Uh, we deal with specific um, actions. When the case comes back to the court, dealing with the specific conduct, that's when you get to know uh, if that uh, conduct is annoyance or whatever. So the parallel in what I'm saying is that the same thing would go for the word uh, um, divisive. Um, it is only when a particular conduct is an issue that you'll be able to say that you'll be able to say that um, this is divisive or it is not uh, divisive. I, I don't think that you have any other way of knowing ahead of a particular conduct being called into question. Well, Mr. Issa, uh, clearly the, there's a lot of work for the, uh, the broadcaster. Uh, beg your pardon, the editor in particular. Um, let, let's come back to Lagos now. Uh, there's a lot of work on the hands of the editor right now. I mean, the question that Chamberlain asked should actually be for you, or rather should also be for you, uh, the five W's and the H. Yeah. Uh, how do you not give details when you cast, especially in broadcasting, your first three paragraphs? Uh, maybe you will judging from the letter from the NBC, we should cut you from 5W and the H to maybe 2Ws. <laughs> now to give too much details, according to that letter. Uh, we have to give details. Our viewers, our listeners, and our readers, they want to get the details from us. And that is how we are in the business of uh, reporting you. So, what you used to say that we should give too much details. And now, you see the word divisive rhetorics. Now, who defines that? Same thing, the issue of national interest. It's, it's just vague. Who, who defines that? Because I do know that most of the time, um, what government sees as national interest may actually be for government interest. They are different. You know, but most times, they use that to gag the media. Uh, okay, this is national interest. Whereas, actually, it's actually for the interest of the government in power. They are different. Government comes, government goes, but... Nigeria as a country remains. Let, let me ask you, so my, my apologies, yeah. let, let, me, let me quickly punctuate you and ask you this one. On the one hand, the Constitution says the press has the responsibility of holding governments to account. On the other hand, the editor has the tough assignment of putting out news, but not putting out news that could aggravate. What are the, some of the considerations that you already make, uh, that media already makes in the newsroom that people may not be aware of? You know, um, thank you for that question. Most times, a lot, we don't even report everything that we see. We don't. We we'll leave out things. For instance, if there's a club with two ethnic groups, even when we know their names, we'll just say a club with two ethnic We'll not mention the two ethnic groups because if that happens, are there are casualties, they could be supposed to attack elsewhere. 
So we leave out the names of the ethnic groups involved, just to ensure that there's, there's, there will not there will, there will be counter I mean, attacks elsewhere. So we all do that. Uh, uh, that is why even security agencies sometimes they invite the editors for what they call confidential briefing. They tell a lot of, a lot of details of what is happening. You get, you get the point because they have confidence in us, and uh, you will never find such information in newspapers or on TV and radio. Because you have this mutual understanding that you are working in national interest. That is why they have the confidence to call us for such confidential briefing, where they give us confidential um, information that we will never divulge. You, you get the point? Because we have that confidence. Well, as one, one of the girls in Abuja rightly said, I think this should have come from the security agencies to tell us where we have aired or whatever. But to me, the NBC could have just invited the broadcasters to probably discuss to them. This year, okay, for this, I used to use what is divisive. It should give us, I mean, it should give us instances of divisiveness. Then, number two, when you say don't give too much details, I mean, should, I, should also tell us what it means by two more details. Now we are left just uh, there in the air. We don't know what, exactly what, what it means. The NBC actually invited uh, broadcasters, some broadcasters, and pointed out some of those issues, uh, part of what. Uh, even though many sought more clarification, but uh, I think part of uh, what concerns may have been to be highlighted was that uh, anchors of programs need to know the laws. They need to understand that, I mean, we all know that you hold the airways in public trust for the people. There's what we call NTBB, Not to be broadcast. universal rule. Mm -hmm. Those are common laws that you don't violate. So basic things about ensuring that you know, broadcast houses and anchors do their housekeeping, understand their facts, and not just allow people to spew falsehood on there. So those are pretty basic things. So if they comply with a lot of those, who knows, would they have uh, made any huge impact? You know, as broadcasters, when you have a live program, for instance, and your guest just says something that you feel clearly against um, the rules, you could quickly counter him and say, okay, please don't say that. You can even try to force him to take back his word or apologize. You know, when you leave him to just see whatever he likes, then that would be an issue. You know, so, uh, or probably be, even before the program, you, you have some discussions. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, even somebody agrees to you off air, he may say something else while on air. You know, so these are, uh, but don't forget that the media ought to be free. If you take away that freedom for the media, what we have is just public relations. So is it, could it be that the message that uh, the commission tries to pass across may have been muddled up with some of these? Because if you listen to, I think, in Abuja, to the mention, when you, uh, when police, security agencies parade certain people who, according to laws here, are Suspense. innocent until mm -hmm. proven guilty by the court of law, they show their faces and some of those things. So isn't that where the media needs to have a lot more caution uh, because at the end of the day, there are cases where they get to courts and they're eventually set free. So having already paraded them and shown their faces, there's no way they go back because in the minds of the people, they would have been judged guilty as paraded. I expect every editor to recover that with the laws of libel and defamation. So if you parade a suspect, um, you show his picture, and in the end, the matter goes to court and he wins the case. In the mind of the public, he's already guilty. So he must sue you for libel or kind of. So that is why to this community, how do you have a, a, their own house style? They, they blur the picture of some suspects. Why some I mean, take the picture from their back to ensure they don't possibly show their, true, their real pictures? Because they, are, they know that if they, that guy turns out to be innocent, in the end, they must sue them for libel. So it's a house style, really. And uh, if a media house has been taken to court based on that, the police will not come and defend them. Defend it to say, okay, uh, I got the party there by the police. Of course, they have done that. But what about you, the media house? If somebody sends me a press statement that's libelous, I will not obliged to use it. If I take a look at it and discover that he has libelous issues in there, I, I, I may just not use it. If I go ahead and use it and uh, the, uh, the victim, so to say, goes to court, my defense will not be that I got it from a particular political party, they, they, would, they might even sue the media house, even now the person who sent the press statement. 
That is why, as editors, we have to be very comfortable with the laws. Law of libel, defamation, and all that, to ensure that we are not victims. You know, so that is why if, if police parade suspects, and you want to use their picture, be, be ready for any court case. That is why to these media houses, we do not use those pictures, or we blur the pictures, or cover their faces, so that the public will see the, 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 their faces, really, to avoid the litigation. And uh, Mustafa is our president of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. Well, we'll be back in a moment. We still have some uh, grounds to cover from Abuja as well, so don't go away. Well, I thought we were going on break. Well, let's quickly wrap up with our guests here. I just want to quickly ask you, Mr. Ofyan Ofyan, do you think, uh, what do you think, the media should be doing now in the face of this directive while we await some clarity on the part of the M MBC. But from what you see now, what would you be advising media houses to do, especially broadcast houses? Well, uh, when you ask a lawyer that question, <laughs> uh, the, the, immediate, the immediate answer is take our proceedings against the NBA, uh, sorry, the uh, NBC. Um, to have clarity over that uh, issue because uh, whatever agreement you have with the uh, MBC today... Why not a parley? Why would they have to be... <laughs> why would they have to be going to court? Especially when you know just how lengthy the process could get. Well, I, I told you that if you're asking a lawyer that question, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the reaction of the lawyer is go to court because ultimately uh, that's going to be the... Uh, just... Um, chipping in uh, on something which has been said here. Look, sometimes I, I, I'm not an editor, so I, I don't know what editors have to deal with. But when I hear a statement like, and I'm dealing here strictly as a lawyer, uh, you know, the parameter I'm looking at here is, is this law reasonable in a democratic society, having regards to national security, having regards to um, defense, having regards to public order, and so on and so forth. Uh, because that is a limitation which is placed on the powers of the uh, NBC. Now, taking a typical example, don't mention the victim of a crime in the setting. And I'm asking myself, how is that necessary in the, in the democratic society. If you had a relation who traveled and you heard that something has happened in the area where that relation traveled to, you're actually anxious to know whether your relation is involved or not. You need information. And there are two things going on here. You see, when the media fails to put out the correct information out there, you actually leave the rumor meal to boil. So people invariably get through um, rumors, what the media is not putting out there. And that is more dangerous mm. because it is much more exaggerated. It is much more capable of exploding a situation. But it is necessary in a democratic society mm. that relations of those who have been victims of crime should know as quickly as possible whether their relations are affected and whether they should immediately bring succor and help to relations in such situations. And I think that uh, if the NBC is saying, don't put that out, I do not see how that will stand up to scrutiny mm. by a court of law. Let me quickly, in a court of law. Let me quickly ask you, Mr. Ejo, for just as we wrap up now. Um, we now have a disruptor, social media. Do you think that they're now putting pressure on both the information that, you know, uh, the DSS and the, you know, this, the, the, the media used to, ha you know, have an understanding on before now? I mean, how is that shaping uh, what is now happening within that space? Uh, like I said, uh, there have been cordial relations between uh, the media and the security agencies, and I think it should be sustained. The NBC, on its own part, should be more engaging than giving out these directives that uh, is, could not be interpreted because people give, uh, give a different uh, interpretation. The lawyers will give different interpretation, like Leonard Stick said here. The editors will say we are being guarded. So there should be more engagement you know, to get the people working together. 
all in the common national interest. Well, it's a fine place to leave it, gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. We've been speaking with Mr. Ofion Ofion, who's a senior advocate of Nigeria, and also Mr. Mike Ejofo, who is a former director of the Department of State. So thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. We'll take a break now. We'll be back shortly to consider another matter. Please stay with us.